but I've done different things and yeah. I'm a big believer in that. But let's see. So I went to school to be a nurse, mm -hmm. which I have loved. I still love it. I just, I'm not doing it currently, but I, my downfall was marrying you. I've determined that's, that's what it is. I married and this Jared. podcast has come to an end. <laughs> Hi, friend. This is Annette. This is Jared. And welcome to our Happy Farmily podcast. We're passionate about happy, healthy relationships. And that only happens with happy, healthy people. So join us each week as we discuss the ingredients of making your own Happy Farmily. Thanks for joining us. Let's jump in. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome. To another episode of the Happy Family podcast. I can't even do that talk. like Delilah, like Delilah. Oh, dear. oh that's eight. That's dating us for sure. <laughs> no one under, I don't know, 25 or 30 probably knows what that is. <laughs> now that's going to be stuck in my head. Anyways, if you don't know what that is, look it up as a radio post person in the 90s <laughs> with stories. Anyways, we're here with stories. So we could be like, for the Delilah radio show. Farm stories on the radio. <laughs> we should have like a jingle. We could, we could make like a little. I'll write a jingle. Don't happy worry. Farmily jingle. Anyways. Well, here we are. We're, we're here. We're going to talk about some fun things related to um, fulfill, finding fulfillment in your work. Because after all, we spend most days working. <laughs> Pretty much work. Work, 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 work. That's work. what people do. That's also they work all yeah, day. That's it. But it was funny when we were talking about this because I was trying to think of like a story or something for the to start off the podcast at the beginning and thinking about, you know, just encouraging people to find, you know, what they love. And I'm like, well, man, though, but I've done a bunch of different things. <laughs> so here I'm gonna be telling you, find fulfillment in your work when I've done when I've decided I'm just gonna do something different, right? <laughs> not not quite. Okay. I haven't like jumped around, All right. but I've done different things and yeah. I'm a big believer in that. But let's see. So I went to school to be a nurse, mm -hmm. which I have loved. I still love it. I just am not doing it currently, but I, my downfall was marrying you. I've determined that's, that's what it is. I married this Jared. This podcast has come to an end. Yeah, I, I, I married Jared, who is what they call an entrepreneur, that sort of a category. Which, what does that mean really? We can touch on that. Anyways. It's probably a nicer way to say someone who's full of manure. No. <laughs> it's just a different way to go No, about I don't it. think that. Anyways. Okay. So I I got a exposed. It sounds like I got exposed to like a virus or something. I got exposed to the idea of not of doing different things or starting your own thing. That's right. Right. So I decided, well, I'm going to like start my own wedding dress business. So I started that while I was still doing nursing. I did some other stuff on the side. I did some modeling on the side. I don't know. I did random things, but still did nursing on and off. I just did it like a little bit in part time or that sort of thing. And I don't know, but it's like collectively then between us, we've done different things. Yeah. How about you share a little bit on what you've done? Because you've done a lot of things too. Yeah. So just trying to think how I don't blow up this podcast from the get-go oh. of how to find fulfillment in your work. Mm -hmm. For me, there's an expression like start to enjoy the journey more than the destination. Uh -huh. I love the process of starting, scaling, growing businesses. I love it. So for me, yeah, it's almost like, it's almost like, just like someone would try new hobbies. I'm such a fan of trying new things. And yet it's an expensive addiction because you often have to fund it. You have to pour your yeah, heart like and soul into cute. it. Yeah, it sounds cute. I mm -hmm. should, I should just have stuck with golf. That would have been as a, a much career? cheaper. No, oh. as a hobby. <laughs> that would have been a much cheaper hobby. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's it's like the thrill of it. Yeah. It's the excitement of it to do different things. So if it's like, like if somebody came to me and they were like, I got this idea for a new toilet. This toilet will do unbelievable things. Of all the things you could just think about. I would be excited. I'd be like, oh man, let's go get it. <laughs> this, the toilet industry is about to be disrupted. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm all about just trying fun new things. Yeah. And there's nothing like business to do it. So yeah, I mean, I've done stuff from what 
We did ice cream, juice bars, Assistant some consumer living. packaged goods stuff, real estate, assisted living. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We've done a, a we've done a lot of different. Done a things. lot. It got a little easier when I started to do like some different consulting stuff because yeah. then I didn't have to start the business. I could just go into the business right. and help. Them Which like, I feel okay, like is what are you guys doing? More this your yeah thing. It's cheaper. <laughs> we have this we have this running joke that and someone literally the other day just asked me and I was like, mm, it's it's who people ask me, so what does Jared do? And I'm like, that is a great question. Literally that, you should ask him. <laughs> literally that conference last week. It's like we're right at this table, everybody's introducing themselves, tell them what you do. And I, I look at my buddy Seth, I'm like, Seth, can you answer this better than me? Like, I don't know what I do. What, did like, he say? what do you want me to say? Like, depending on who I'm talking to, like I could tell him, I'll do some of this, I do some of that. And he did pretty good. He's like, Well, he just emphasized the newsletter. Jared has started a newsletter. Oh. He's very excited about this newsletter. And it's great. You all should subscribe. So well, that was nice. It was nice. Jared and does like, have a good newsletter. And I told him, like, yeah, right, you're right, Seth. That's what I need to tell people. I'm doing a newsletter. Jared's been a pastor. Yep, check that box. Amidst all that. Um, I've been in the printing industry. Yeah, yeah, like authored some books, done I'm, some public speaking. <laughs> it's like between the it's two of us, well, I don't know when it was recently. We're sitting down talking, and I'm like, there, there's not a lot that between the two of us we haven't had some sort of exposure to. Because now I'm in the world of like influencer, which sounds super weird um, as my job, but as my life, like we now live on a farm. So I do like farmy things. Right. But I've turned that into a job. So I've had to learn so many things when it comes to the world of, you know, the internet and working with brands and doing all these things. And so it's just between the two of us, the exposure and, and like reach of things, it's just interesting. Yeah. Which is why it's kind of fun to talk about it. Cause I do feel like we have some experience and some like things through the years that we've done that we can speak to, but I don't yeah. know. No, I would just, agree. I, yeah. I had someone recently say like, one of the things they look for is this someone, this guy's successful. He was on a panel with me at this event and he's like, I look for somebody who hasn't jumped around a lot and I'm just laughing inside. I know. Like, cause I'm like, I just, I really have this haven't. temptation to get bored. Yeah. And if I'm bored, it's like sell my equity in the thing to the next guy. Hey man, you buy it from me. I'm yeah. on to the next thing. Or, sell it to someone else that wants to take it from there. Or in some cases, it's, this has been real, closing this down. Yeah. And a few of those, I felt like, what a failure. We sure. spent all this money, we did all those things, only to come back years later and be like, I learned some super valuable lessons in that thing. And now I get to use it to actually yeah. do something else. And I will say for as long as um, Jared and I have known each other and and done things and all of that, I feel like it's all being leading up to like now, which is very cool. I would totally agree with Just that. Just with all the things we're doing now and trying to do, I think we've had to go through this trajectory of basically 20 years is what I would say. For the last 20 years, <laughs> we've done um, a lot of different things, met a lot of different people, all these things to now be at the place where we're like, okay, we now know enough people, have all the... Um, kind of skills and things to do like the next thing. And that's, I don't know, that's good. Yeah. It wouldn't, we wouldn't be there if it wouldn't have been for all that, but that's a lot of life and living and work, right? And pain. Yeah. I oh, mean, for sure. I'm just thinking recently, yeah. like with Ava, like how are we going to manufacture pain into her life? Sure. Because the temptation for us is shower her with love, give her whatever she needs. Don't yeah. let anything bad. It's I will like, say, I I will say one thing. I will say to that, which is kind of a different subject, but I do think she is, however, exposed to a lot with being on the farm. Okay. So I don't feel like she's been completely sheltered in terms of like she's seen death. She's seen like. Well, then things. Can, can I let everyone know what she's being groomed for? I don't know what you're going to say. So probably sure. a sniper or a drone pilot in the military <laughs> what? because. When animals oh. die, she's like, hmm, they died. Next. She's like, okay, it's okay, mom. You know, and I'm like, like Percy, she's a stone our alpaca cold killer. died. And I'm literally in like, I'm like sobbing. We're burying him on our hill right she's here. She's like I, making I can jokes. see it from when we're sitting. Like Jared's crying. I'm crying. Our friend Lydia's with us. She helped me care for him. She's crying. And here, and Ava's like, mm -hmm -hmm. Mm -hmm. literally 
yesterday we walked by where Percy Percy's buried. And I was like, oh, Ava, this is where Percy is. She's like, yeah, I know. And and she's like, she's like, yeah, I know. I I I remember he's there. That makes me happy. And just keeps going. That makes me happy. And I was like, okay, sure. Sounds cool. This girl. <laughs> anyways, this girl go anyways, she's exposed to to a lot in terms of I don't think we're sheltering her from like some of those type of things. Yeah, you're right. Now I get you from from you know, I think it's again another podcast. <laughs> Kids need to go, I think, through certain things. They can't be that sheltered. I get what you're saying. But anyways. Yeah, sure. Yeah. The pain of it the all. The pain of the last, we've had a lot, we've gone through a lot of ups and downs in the last 20 years. It's not been like this glorious, like we have lived very poor. <laughs> we have like been okay. We've had, you know, ups, downs and things. So we've learned a lot over the last 20 years, mm -hmm. 20 plus, whatever. Okay. Anyway, Especially but, about work. So here so, we go. So I was, so I was, I was reading this statistic that says only 45% of millennials we'll just use that demographic um, who occupy a big part of the workforce are completely satisfied with their job. And only 20% of all U S employees are satisfied slash passionate about their jobs. That's like, that's low. All right. I have an opinion. Yeah. It's going to make, maybe make some of our millennial listeners upset. Don't be mad. You are a millennial, right? I think, mm, I think I'm on the, I think I'm right. Uh, no, no, no. That's all right. Anyway, what is what year it's is it? Okay. I don't even know. I, I think it's like thirty eight and younger. I don't is millennial. I'm I'm forty. Yeah, I know. So you're not millennial. That's what I'm saying. I'm not. I thought you said I was. Oh yeah. Carry yeah, on. Well, I married a forty year old. Whoa. All right. So basically, okay. here's what I think it is. I think it is. Um. How do I say this? It's actually forty. I messed up my things. So you are a millennial. I'd like to say I'm on the on the not. You're millennial, on the cusp. On the sure, <laughs> but honestly, it's everyone. Everyone listening is probably millennial, so yeah. they're about okay, to okay, say okay, what? Okay, okay, we love you. The point is, well, the other millennial factors like data. I would be curious if somebody could check other boxes in their life to be like, I am so fulfilled. My physical health is where I wanted to be. My relationships where I wanted to be. Then I would love to ask the third question: How's your work? And I would doubt many people would say, oh, yeah, those two things are amazing. My work is terrible. I bet they'd rank their work higher. But why do you think everyone's so not happy then with the first two in in that category? What's different? Well, it's it's the most single generation ever. So th they haven't found their person. Yeah. That's a big deal. It's also increasingly one of the most unhealthy. Hmm. Like the junk that's in our food supply sure. and just the lifestyle and social media. I mean, mental health among millennials is right. a train wreck. Because social media is just, yeah. I'm not as, I mean, the class I was teaching yesterday enough. was like, this girl just saying, I get depressed when I use social media. I'm just like, then why use it? Right. I, I see what I don't have. I want things I don't, I'm like, mm. oh my word. Mm. So anyway, I, I think there's something I agree to that. with you that if you have, if you're in a good pr place, like mental health wise, and you're, you feel good about like yourself and all those things, other things flow from that. Sure. Right. So versus yeah if you're not then a lot of things will probably be more negative yeah and the and reality is you do spend most of your days working mm -hmm. so if work is and especially increasingly so what did we accomplish today with our work people yeah well i have something here it actually says like understanding fulfillment in your work and the thought is you know fulfillment is a feeling when you find your work meaningful but that's tied to three things what makes your work meaningful right um are you making an impact on something that matters? Can you actually see the fruits of your labor? You know, that kind of thing. Do you have meaningful relationships in your workplace? And are you growing in your career and personal life? So it's like, is your personal life, you know, growing? Is, is that okay? Do you have meaningful relationships? Are you doing something that matters? Love it. And that you can see. And, and that's hard. That's hard. Um, depending on what career path you're doing, that's probably hard to... I would say number one is big on a lot of people. Am I doing any something that matters? Absolutely. And I mean, you've had that. Like, oh, yeah. I, I feel mean, like it, that's been big for you. Like, oh, um, is this actually, what is this doing? Is this actually doing something for Well, someone? I think that's why a lot of millennials are like, I'm going to become a farmer. Because at least at the end of the day, I can determine, what did I do today? Yeah. I did that. Well, that, and I've that, talked and about that. that. That's shown, like, like statistics have shown the, the, you know, that you find so much more satisfaction when you do something with your hands getting your hands in a soil or even like a trade, just something where you 
make something, make something, put something together, fix something, build something, plant something, you know, anything that, because you can say, wow, I went from A to B in this period versus just my baby computer or something where you're just yeah. not feeling like. So uh, on that note, I can say from a few ventures that I've been in, it is a pretty key thing. Figure a way to measure everyone's success output mm -hmm. and get a dashboard. So in other words, if there's something digital going on and everybody's like, did we do anything today? Have a TV in some conference room or in the hallways or in wherever that measures, hey, we did this today and it's always updating. Mm -hmm. That way everyone can be like, oh, we did something today. But I want to read this. This mm -hmm. is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It says, it talks about doing our best work in whatever lies closest to us. It says, remember that in whatever position you're serving in, you're revealing motive, developing character, uh, whatever your work, do it with exactness, with diligence, and overcome the inclination to seek an easy task. Which I think is very easy, like, especially with work, like, you know what, I don't want to do that. Let somebody else do that. Mm -hmm. Rather than give me the hard stuff. And every time I see people who crave the hard stuff, they end up becoming the managers, making more money, advancing, because they're learning skills. I've got a great book here called Range. Just talks about the range of skills you need, not only today, but in the workplace of tomorrow. You can't just be too pigeonholed in something, although I think that's important to know something well. You got to have a range of at least understanding to have a conversation with other people. Mm -hmm. Anyway. I wonder what prevents some people from being driven, though, because I do think that can happen where I'm just going to do my job. I'm not going to try to do the best or do, you know what I mean? It's just, I'm just going to do it. I mean, I think what drives that? Well, if your satisfaction is in watching something on a screen you don't have to make a lot of money to do that yeah so i mean if you leave work and you're like i'm playing video games i'm watching porn i'm going i'm scrolling through tiktok i'm flipping through pinterest you don't have to make a lot of money if that satisfies you and unfortunately the dopamine mm -hmm. loop is that's satisfying a lot of people they think it's like this is life mm -hmm. when it's it's not and i think once people experience more it's like oh how do i experience that again well that may cost more money i have to work harder although it's increasingly more difficult to see your pay yeah, justified that's where, the hard work you're yeah doing. which is like uh, i don't know i think i think to find fulfillment th there's probably just a few things i wrote a few things down for finding career for fun and fulfillment and one is to align with your values so to find out so in the job you're doing try for it to be with something that aligns with what you are passionate about or what you love or what you believe in. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a good one on that passion. Like finding something, what are you good at? Do, do Does what you like to do and maybe what you're good at, is there any intersection in those? Because if there mm -hmm. is, you should do that. Yeah. And, and so I was, this is funny. I'll take one second to say something. I don't know if this is the time to mention this, but if... If your job currently doesn't align with your values or isn't something you absolutely love or something that makes you excited every day to do, um, that happens, right? That can happen. You know, maybe you can't just switch your job, but you can choose. Well, first of all, you can choose what attitude you have when you go into your job and you can choose to do, you know, good, even if it's not your favorite thing in the world. But you can also choose what to do in your time outside of work mm -hmm. and making sure that those hours are something that bring you fulfillment or align with your values or are something right. you're passionate about. You know, that's why I say like, I think everyone should garden a little bit, whether you have, you know, a nine to five job or whatever, you can spend, you know, a little extra time outside when you get home from work, you know, go do something. And that can maybe give you the satisfaction and, and happiness that you need to then do the other stuff. Yeah. And so, I think back to that quote earlier, whatever you're doing right now, do the best, be the best at it and just yeah. say, you know what? This isn't where I think I'll be forever, but I'm going to be the best. Pick on something people would not want to do. Janitor. I'm going to be well, the that's... best janitor yeah. that is around and my work will be rewarded and recognized and I will keep looking for opportunities because I'm giving this my all. Like I think work uh, ethic is followed by mm -hmm. reward. And it's interesting how... I've, I feel like I've even discovered this a little more for myself lately, but it's amazing how you really just have to change your mindset on something and, and think of it differently and tell yourself like, you know, I can do this or I'm going to do this. And 
you can do it. Yeah. You know, I think the more we dwell on the negative, which is hard sometimes, but the more you dwell on the negative and not then the least likely you are to, you know, mm -hmm. if you go into work negatively every day, you're not going to have a positive experience is what I'm saying. Right. You're going to get out of it what you put in. That's exactly so, right. Yeah. Yep. But anyways, um, so if you have, here's a thought to, to have like your own personal, I've, I've talked about this before, uh, in terms of farm life and thinking of what you're going to do, but, you know, defining your why having like a mission statement for yourself or like a, like, why am I doing this? What is it that drives me? And then that can kind of help and guide you as you're going through your work or finding new work. Um, what's your mission statement for yourself? It's good. Like, what are you, you know what I mean? Like, what are you aligning with? What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. The next one uh, is very personal to me. I think there was a while where I was trying to find all meaning and fulfillment in life at work. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's a healthy relationship with work. It's expecting too much. You expect it to check all the boxes in your life. So for me, what was a big rearranging, reworking of it all was, what is the life that if I live and I live to 100, I will be happy I lived, I'll be healthier, uh, all the different things. And for me, it was reverse engineering to say, okay, what does that include? Well, that includes uh, exercise, eating healthy, going to sleep on time, where I used to just abuse this, like, oh, Annette, I'll be asleep at 2 a.m. I'm working on a project. Mm -hmm. Like, that doesn't lead anywhere productive. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like building out a calendar. Okay, this is what I'm going to work out. This is what I'm going to do this. This is what I'm going to do this. And then you have to fit your 40, 50, 60 hour work week into that life. Mm -hmm. And boy, if there's something that's like refreshing. So, uh, you know, for me, it was the goals of what is the life I want to live? It doesn't mean like, oh, I want to work two hours a week. Yeah, you and everybody else. <laughs> but Sounds I good. also <laughs> would say like, it's nice to when you love your work mm -hmm. and you love to be at work and do work, find that thing, which may not be now, maybe it's in the future and you mm -hmm. figure it out. But um I think the goal setting of what is what is a sustainable life? How do I enjoy this journey as I go? Mm -hmm. And where does work fit, fit into it? And for a lot of us, the work loses some of the importance because it's, well, this is the type of work that I'm doing now. I might do a different work tomorrow, but the life I want to live is built in and around this. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I think also if, you know, just setting that, or we talked about goals at the beginning of January, I think. So if you have set kind of your goals and you've had some of that in mind, then you can really, um, it'll just help you as you go along. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Another thing I was going to add is basically this idea of trying new things, getting out of your comfort zone being pushed. Well, which I think is like where we're saying like, oh, we've tried to do a million different things. I think the world normally tells you you do one career for your whole life. Yeah. That's kind of the norm or you or what you went to school for. You know, you spent uh -huh. a lot of money <laughs> going to school, getting a degree, which by the way, I I will say it's funny, Jared and I both went to college and have degrees, but I I don't know if I'm going to push my daughter to to do that. I mean, I think I will let her choose, but I don't think you like have to do that. Um, and that's not really what's taught. Uh, my parents would probably be like, ah, you know, but yeah, it, it's okay to try something new. That's what I'm saying. Well, and I think in the world of tomorrow, it's a different world. Yeah. 16, what, how old are you? 14, when you go to college, 18, I don't know, 14 years from now. Yeah. Like it is an entire. I know, I can't even world. imagine. Like you have large tech companies now not caring about a four-year degree. Mm -hmm. But some still, I mean, but I think it's still the thing though. Yeah, it's still the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you develop enough skills, people will waive the thing. Right. It's just weird how that's different. But some careers require it. Yeah, Attorney, yeah, yeah. Well, for doctor. sure. Well, if I was a nurse, like you couldn't, I mean, you have to learn stuff. Obviously, yeah. there are some things, but meaning, I, I guess I'm just telling you if you know, if someone's listening and, and you're not loving what you're doing right now, it's okay to try something different. Yeah, I totally it agree doesn't with mean that. you have to stick with that because you invested your life or money or, you know, 20 years of your life. It's okay. Like it's, you're never too, um, old to start something new. Yeah. Well, I think that's kind and, of like our podcast. Was it last week? Yeah. When to let go. Yeah. Like sometimes it's okay to change course. Yeah. It's totally okay. And I think. And the know, same idea for a new career or for a new path, like, 
there's people that start, um, you know, training for things in their fifties and then they're like, it's amazing. It's like, what in the world? Like you just started learning that, you know? Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, it's cool. Mm -hmm. But anyways, um, it's like, well, if you decide that you don't know what career you're going to do and you want to switch it up and do something different, just be an entrepreneur like Jared, (laughs) just try that route. Maybe have a plan, a little bit of a plan beforehand of what you're going to do there. But well, we were talking about before this, like where that sounds a little idealistic. Sure. Depending on how humbly you can live, you can do anything you want. Yeah. So a lot of times we get trapped into a world we've created and it's like, I can't leave this job. I have to keep paying the house payment, mm-hmm. car payment, et cetera, payment. It's like, well, you could live super humble and then you can probably do anything you want. And humble can be so happy. I guess I yeah. think in our in our world today, and that's the thought of... Um, like, like, I'm going to give an example. I have a friend, probably making 300000 a year, decided I'm going to be happy farming. If I can just pay off like a $150,000, $200,000 house, and that wasn't what he did first. He just said, I'm going to work towards that. Yeah. Then that will allow me to farm. He's one of the smartest, most brilliant people I know. I mean, but farming like, can make you money. That, but yeah, yeah, it can, but that wasn't his goal. He's just like, I just want to chill out. I think he does a little consulting yeah, here yeah, and there yeah. now. But he realized, I can't live a high lifestyle and detach myself from it. So I got to cut all of my means down way low. I mean, there's different ways to go about it. Not easy ones. I think I think if if many people would learn how they can find so much satisfaction in doing things outside and in nature and with their hands, you would realize that you can find such joy in that, that you're not needing like maybe all the money to do like all the things. Mm -hmm. I feel like you and I used to do more. I mean, we were never like really into like a lot of like events or things or going to things, maybe some, but it's like now it's like, well, you know, I don't know. I just feel like there's so much more to do or be busy here and around, you know, the farm and stuff that that's fulfilling, at least for me, I have found the most fulfillment from being here. Like we just, before we just recorded this podcast, we went outside, we have our, our new little donkey, Alfie, we were petting him. I mean, he's like the cutest thing. I can't even handle it. Like, it's literally like, I just want to squish him. Like maybe I'll put him in our bed and Jared will wake up one morning <laughs> and the little donkey will be like, you know, would not morning, be shocked. Right. But it's just, um, anyway, so for me, Personally, I have done a wide variety of things. I haven't jumped around a lot. I've I've done things like for long periods of time, different careers, if you will. But uh, the my most satisfaction and joy has been from doing the most simple things. Sure. And that's where it's like you want to encourage people like, you know, you don't need all the things. Sure. So you don't need to make bajillions of dollars to sustain this like never ending hamster wheel that I think we get on called life and the rat race that like we kind of have you don't really need all that like stuff you can actually find joy in much more simple things yeah um, that aren't as expensive is what i'm saying Um, okay one more thing i wanted to touch on is this idea of working with people you like yeah building relationships at work with whatever work you're doing so there's a thing like you don't want to work with your friends i'm against that idea (laughs) like i work all week why would I not want to work with my friends? Yeah. So, boy, if you can find a way to enjoy the people you work well, with. Well, finding a community. And, well, but especially yeah. at work. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's good to have one outside. Yeah. If your work changes, if you were fired, oh, you don't want to lose all your best friends. But, mm-hmm. boy, if you can work with people you like, like, it is the best. Because your your time is already going to be 40, mm-hmm. 60 hours a week. Like, why not enjoy that with people you like? Do you like working with me? I feel like I work for you. Do you mean with you? <laughs> yeah, silly. <laughs> um, I I will say when I worked, and you can't really sometimes pick your work family, right? That's right. Like that's not. But you can enjoy them. But you can make the most. Yeah, you can learn. You know, I think the older, at least for me, the older I've gotten in life, the more you realize that you learn to love people literally as they are. When in like my twenties, you'd see someone and you'd think like, oh, they're kind of weird or strange or oh, I don't know if I did it. You you learn to just move past that and embrace and appreciate how awesome people can be, um, and we're all in this life together. 
learning together. I recently, um, when I was out at this, um, event in Canada, we talked about it a few podcasts back. It was like this wonderful weekend, like for self <laughs> development. And, um, I, we'll put the link in the show notes again, just cause I think it's wonderful. But uh, one girl said something that I thought was profound. And she said, you know, we're all doing this life together. We are all learning at the same time. We've never lived our life before, like, right. So it's like, no one, told me, you know, I'm doing what I can. I'm doing the best I can. Mm -hmm. And so we have to basically meet each other where we're at. And you can't just pick who, like the people you are working with, but sure. you can choose to like them. And I remember when I worked at the hospital as a nurse, um, I think, you know, for whatever reason, sometimes work conditions weren't most ideal all the time. Management was not most ideal all the time. There was all these things like, oh, this, or, oh, I can't believe they... But the people I worked side by side with, we chose to say, we are going to show up for each other. And nursing is hard. A lot of times, you know, there's, there's a lot going on. You have very busy days. But man, if I reached to that person next to me, I said, hey, can you help me? It didn't matter how busy they were, they would help me. And if they asked me for help, I would help them. It made such a difference. That's awesome. Like I liked going into work no matter how bad, you know, the day might be because of the people. So I think you can... You can choose to make it work, you know, with yeah. who you work with. And it doesn't mean you have to like every single person, but you can find sure. your core, like, right? Yeah. Like little. Even if it's one person. Little group. It's just, it's fun. I always remember the thought of just community, how even like with the animals, if they don't have one of their own kind, they're like grumpy and not the best. And when you put them with their own kind, like our goose was by himself for a year without other geese, which by the way, I have like nine more eggs in the incubator right now. And I'm like, Ooh, they're so loud. I don't think we can keep them all. But, um, this, as soon as that goose saw the other little geese, it's like it, he was so happy, had his people. So it's like, yeah, find your people totally. in your work, enjoy your work and don't be afraid to, to love your work, you know? And maybe look at it in a different light. Maybe you'll like it. Even if you don't like it today, if you change your mindset, it might might get better. Or it might change tomorrow. Or you might just change jobs. And let us know. We'd love to hear. I'd love to hear if you're like on a cusp like of maybe something different or I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll give you, we we have thoughts on uh, different ideas that we, we would be happy to give you our ideas. That's right. <laughs> but anyways, thank you for uh, listening and being a part and... We'll come back with more ideas uh, next week. With Delilah. Oh, my God. Please look it up. If you don't know, just look it up. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>